Another film that had a lot of comedy but also had a lot of action, Die Hard 2. I mean, uh, within the genre, hailed as a classic. And again, a film that just people seem to love all these years later. I mean, endlessly rewatching. Um, can you talk a little about the, the experience of making that wonderful film and working with Bruce, of course? Yeah, the, it was really humor as opposed to comedy. Comedy, you're playing for the laughs, but the humor comes out of the moment and the characters and the situation. Um, I loved working on the movie. I loved the fact that we totally deceived the audience, set them up. When my character is initiated, initially brought to the screen, Major Grant, I'm Major Grant, I'm with Blue Light. We're here to save the day. So a cheer went up from the audience. I stood in the back of the theater with Joel Silver, the producer, and a cheer literally went up from the audience because I'd been established as the, the, everybody's dad, the universal patriarch, always out to be the good guy and right the wrongs, etc. And then later, when I did the dastardly act of cutting one of the crewmen's throats, they said, oh, it was an audible gas from the audience. And Joel Silver, the producer, was elated. He said, we got him, we got him. So we had pulled off a coup, we felt like. You know, we totally threw the hook in. I mean, your character and John McClane um, have an interesting relationship at first. They're kind of, there's a sense of, you know, I kind of like you, McClane. And then by the end, it's just, uh, no, he's, he's, he's kicking you into a, a jet engine. Um, in the interim, there was some real, uh, there was some genuine three-dimensional live hostility. Uh, but I won't go into that. That'll be for a chapter in the book. <laughs> I guess, I mean, well, suffice it to say, Bruce Willis will never insult me in public again. You got that, Bruce? In action films, uh, particularly of that period, the death scenes were often the things that people talked about the most, the most memorable ways. And I mean, your character, he really did go out in quite a memorable way. I mean, can you talk about filming? Yeah, they turned me into a big chocolate milkshake. <laughs> or smoothie. <laughs> I'm dangling there by the turbine engine. They cut, and then I disappear, and they took about a half a gallon of pig guts and, and artificial blood and threw it into this big fan and that's what I became. So I had a very ignominious departure from the movie but it's memorable at least. Why do you think out of all of the action films of that period that seems to be one that people keep coming back to and keep hailing as one of the best of those kind of action genre films? Well, the, the, the script was tight. The performances by everyone, Bruce included, and I concede that, were wonderful. Uh, Arthur Franz, who played Sip Sipowicz in NYPD Blue, played the airport cop, and he was wonderful, as he always is. Uh, as I said, it was a great experience, great locations. One of the things a lot of people don't know about that film is that because the snow in the movie was such a critical part of the production, we literally had to shut down production for the better part of a month while the film company and scouting locators looked for snow somewhere in the country. So when they chose to go to uh, one state or another, invariably that state would have a heat wave. <laughs> so I didn't mind. I, had to st I could stay at home while they found the snow and get paid. And meanwhile, um, we ultimately did find snow, but not enough of it. So they ended up shooting a lot of the scenes on a soundstage in California where the outside temperature was about 80 degrees but they brought in these huge air conditioning units from Carrier Air Conditioning and uh, froze the studio over so that we could simulate snow in cold weather. It's Hollywood, we're in the illusion creating business.